The railways came to Guildford around 1845 when a six mile length of single track was joined to the South Western's main line at Woking. Within two years the line had been doubled and in the meantime another line came into Guildford from Red Hill and yet another line was being built to join with the Farnham and Alton. In 1849 a further branch line to Farnham was opened at Ash Junction and also through running of trains commenced between Red Hill, Guildford and Reading. The single line from Ash Junction to Farnham was notable for the part it played in turning Aldershot into the country's most important army camp. In 1859, Godalming ceased to be the end of the short branch line when the Portsmouth direct line was completed. The next line to enter this fast-growing Surrey hamlet came in from Horsham. This was a 15.5 mile single track branch line with a passing loop at Baynards, with other passing loops at stations added later. The line ran from Stamram Junction to Peasmarsh Junction, where it joined the Portsmouth direct line just south of Guildford. The last new route to be constructed to Guildford was the London and South Western Railway's new Guildford line. It's still called the new line to this day. By the mid-1860s, the station was developing into an important junction and was appropriately named Guildford Junction. A twin gabled train shed spanned the centre of five platforms and a covered footbridge was erected along with a two-road engine shed. This was built on the eastern side of the station with a turntable at the southern end. The majority of the goods workings were local in nature. Pick-up goods dominated, but there was also a reasonable amount of cattle and sheep traffic, Guildford having its own cattle market nearby. The cattle pens were situated on the eastern side of the station beyond the coaling stage. With the ever-increasing traffic from the New Line and Horsham Line in the mid-1880s, Plans were drawn up to rebuild the station, which meant that the original engine shed would have to be demolished. When the London and South Western Railway lines first opened to Guildford, the motive power comprised many of the early locomotives used by the company. Later the passenger services were mainly in the hands of the Adams designs, ranging from the Radial 442s, Jubilee 042s and Jumbo 060s. Drummond classes such as the M7044s, L11s, L12s and T9440s and 700 class 060s began to supersede some of the Adams classes. In order to provide sufficient space for the new engine shed, the chalk pit situated south of the Farnham Road Bridge was enlarged to accommodate a semi-roundhouse building with 13 rows radiating from a 50-foot turntable. Owing to the restricted space, the site of the coaling stage and ash pits had to be built opposite the station, which meant that the prevailing southwest winds blew smoke, ash and grit towards the station, much to the annoyance of passengers waiting for their trains. There were 60 locomotives allocated to the shed and in 1896 it was decided to make some alterations, creating seven straight roads, each capable of housing three tender locomotives. When completed, the extension was used as a running shed, allowing the semi-roundhouse to be used for repairs and boiler washouts. The semi-roundhouse shed required a small locomotive as a shed pilot and several locomotives took their turn in performing this task. The motive power depot at Guildford continued to grow in importance after the grouping in 1923 as the trains from Guildford to Havant 
Horsham, Redhill and Reading remain steam hauled. In 1926, the shed had an allocation of just over 80 locomotives and boasted a staff of 465 men, of whom 328 were drivers and firemen. Other staff consisted of foremen, boiler washers, coalmen, chargemen, boilersmiths, fitters and their apprentices. Among other grades of men employed were sandmen, ash loaders, gland packers, tubers, painters and even carpenters. Following Maunsell's retirement, Bully took over the reins of Chief Mechanical Engineer, the Q1 class, Coffee Pot, being synonymous with Guildford. The infrastructure of the shed was once more updated between 1933 and 1934. The coal stage was replaced and electric cranes were installed to ease the task of coaling locomotives. Improvements were made to the approach roads and pits to rationalise movements in and around the shed. Between 1923 and 1948, the biggest change in the allocation of steam locomotives to Guildford was the arrival of the Maunsell classes, especially the 260s. By 1933, the shed boasted 25 U-class moguls, mainly for the Reading to Red Hill line, and 26 M7044s. Other Maunsell locomotives also appeared. Lord Nelson, King Arthur and S15 460s on through trains to Portsmouth before the line was electrified. The youngest recruits to the shed started as engine cleaners and they then progressed to disposing of locomotives as they came on shed and finally to coaling, watering and turning locomotives for the next book duty. Two voluntary links were the dual link, where men could opt to train for driving the electric multiple units, as well as drive steam locomotives. And then the old man's gang, where drivers nearing retirement age could opt for light duties, which didn't involve working a night shift. The work in number one link was mostly passenger work on the Reading to Red Hill line, which had 12 diagrams, and also between London, Salisbury and Southampton, which had six turns. Number two link involved working freight and parcel trains over the same routes as number one link. Number three and four links looked after local goods, passenger and ballast workings, whilst work in number five link comprised of pickup goods, work on the Alton, Reading, Redhill and Woking lines, and number six link was used as a relief link covering holidays and sickness for the other links. The Old Man's Gang covered shunting at Guildford and Woking along with pick-up goods work over the Alton to Guildford line. By 1950 Guildford Shed was coded 70C and in June that year it briefly witnessed the testing of Bully's futuristic 0660 T leader class, which made some test runs between Woking and Guildford. At the same time, the roof of the semi roundhouse was replaced using corrugated sheeting. By 1959, Guildford Shed's allocation had reduced to 45 locomotives, incorporating 4M7 class, 3G6 class, 8 700 class, 16 U class moguls, 1 T9 class and the Shed Pilot B4 class 30089. The 
These were augmented in early 1960 by the arrival of three V-class schools, 30903 Charterhouse, 30906 Sherborne and 30909 St Paul's for use on the Reading to Red Hill services. In September 1962, the Crompton Type 3 Bobo diesel electric locomotive started to appear on the Margate to Wolverhampton service and also on the return workings. In March 1963, B4 class 30089 was condemned and was replaced by USA class 30064 and finally USA class 30072. With the withdrawal of the M7 class, the Horsham line workings became a virtual monopoly of the Ivert Class 2MT locomotives. However, some of the services were hauled by the Q1 class locomotives. In 1965, the Beeching report favoured the closing of the line, and on the 14th of June, Ivert Class 2MT 41287 worked the last book passenger service. On the 4th of January 1965, the Reading to Red Hill line was turned over to diesel traction with three car diesel electric multiple units working an hourly interval service. During the mid 1960s, the Portsmouth direct line via Guildford was utilised as a diversionary route at weekends while electrification work was being carried out on the Waterloo to Bournemouth main line. This brought the spectacle of bullied Pacifics and BR standard class 5 locomotives running through Guildford with prestigious trains such as the Bournemouth Bell. By 1965, Guildford's allocation was down to 28 locomotives and comprised USA Class 30072, 9N and 8U Class, 6Q1 Class and 4 Ivert Class 2MT locomotives. With the withdrawal of the Mansell to S15 Class and the Bully Q1 Class, much of the variety which was once the trademark of Guildford Shed vanished forever. On Sunday the 9th of July 1967, after years of decline and neglect, only four steam locomotives remained. The first two locomotives to leave, initially to Salisbury and then later to South Wales to face the Cutter's Torch, for BR Standard Class 5MT 73155 and 73118 coupled together. Rebuilt West Country Class 34018 Axminster followed them to Salisbury and finally USA Class 30072 left for Salisbury via Havant, destined for a new career on the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway. All signs of the motor power depot at Guildford have now been raised to the ground. The roundhouse engine shed has disappeared and sadly the site is now a multi-storey car park.